In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this responsive circular timer, like this one right here. But I'm gonna show you how to create this using the tools that I created, these smart tools. And uh, I find these tools extremely useful. Now, obviously they're not free, but if you have them, I think you'll find this very useful. I realize I create all these tools and I don't really show you guys all that much uh, of like practical examples. I use them all the time, but I'm assuming everyone else does. So I need to do more tutorials now. I mentioned it before, I do feel guilty doing tutorials on that because they're not free. But at the same time, I do need to show you how awesome they are because they will save you a lot of time. And uh, you'll see here in a second why. So let's get started. I'm gonna start fresh here from with this composition. And it's 1920 by 1080, 30 frames per second. And I'm gonna create a new uh, null object, but I use shape layer. So I'm gonna right click here, go to new. And instead of null objects, I say shape layer. It's the same thing. A null object creates a solid which creates like a solid folder. I just hate that concept. I never use solids. So I just like to use a shape layer because when you create it like this, it creates a blank like shape layer, essentially just a point. So it's perfect for a null object. So I'm gonna call this one controls. And uh, then I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go over here, navigate over to the effects control panel, right click, and let's go to the slider. So I'm gonna create a slider control and we're going to name this one size. So it's gonna be the size of our circle. Okay, next I'm gonna use a smart rect. So select this, based on my selection, I'm gonna navigate over to smart rect. I'm gonna to go to fill here, uncheck it. Let's go to stroke, let's check it. Make sure it's set to 12 pixels. Uh, make sure it's parented, make sure that's checked. And when you have something selected, when you run it based on the center anchor point, it's gonna create it basically a shape that's the same size as your selection. Now, because I've selected a point that is nothing, then it created a shape layer, but as you can see, X size and Y size is set to zero. So it's okay. I'm gonna actually rename this one to BG for background. And I'm gonna select this. We can kind of extend this a bit to kind of show you that it does work. That's good. Then we're gonna navigate over to roundness here. We're gonna set it to 100%, so it is round. So that's a good start. We're gonna also take this white and maybe take it a bit darker. So we're gonna click on this stroke color and make it more gray, maybe like 40%. That looks good, so it's kind of subtle. That's good for me. Now, what I wanna do next, I'm gonna select this background, press E to reveal these properties in here. So as you can see, there they are. I'm gonna select the X size and Y size. You can select them like this and hit S twice to solo it. And I'm gonna select controls, press E to reveal the slider that we just created. So essentially what I wanna do, I wanna link both of these to this slider right here, the size. So I'm gonna take X size and just pick whip to it like this, and then Y, and now it's set to zero. So both of them are set to zero. But if I pull on this, you can see we have a beautiful circle. So that's a good start. All right, so we have that. I'm gonna select this, press Control D and duplicate it. We're gonna call this one Animated Circle. Okay, all right, so then I'm gonna select this. So this is gonna be our Animated Circle, and we're gonna go over here and make sure you select it. We're gonna change the color of it to something brighter so it stands out big time so something maybe like this that's good so it kind of jumps at us i like it so next we're going to select this and uh well we're actually done for right now i mean we do have this kind of controlling both of them but now we need to create a text so we're going to go to smart counter it's a tool that we just released and uh, this tool is extremely useful if you haven't seen me talk about it just go to the top right corner here click on the video i'll tell you more about smart counter how useful it is so it does come with the smart tools bundles if you purchase it in the past then you can download it for free so i'm going to do this so i'm going to make sure nothing is selected actually and click on this it creates a new text and we can slide on this so that's perfect now i'm going to go to character here and make sure tracking is set to zero uh, 200 is probably good all right so that's good then what i'm going to do i'm going to select the text and uh, i'm going to go to smart anchor it's another tool that I created. I find it extremely useful. And uh, I'm gonna set it to expression, so make sure it applies an expression to the anchor points. And I wanna get the size of this text. Well, it's gonna work with it based on where it's at at the very end of the layer. So it's very important because it's gonna be animating and stuff, but I want the size of it at the end. So based on that, I'm gonna center the anchor point. So as you can see, it goes to the center. Then I'm gonna put it underneath here. If you hold Shift and parent pick whip to the controls layer, it will snap it to the controls both anchor points are going to be at the same position so it puts it in the center exactly where i need it to be then i can select let's do this we're going to go to the text smart counter and we're just going to play with it we're going to set it to zero for it or let's do 60. okay that's going to be our starting point 
It's great. So now we're going to go to maybe like one second mark and we're going to set a keyframe at 60. I'm going to select this, press U to reveal the keyframe. And then we're going to go to maybe like five second mark and we're going to take it down to zero. So we have this animation that goes from 60 to zero. Yeah, it's perfect. We're almost there. Now, as you can see, it's a double digit here, but then eventually gets to like nine. And, and as you can see, it's just one digit. So to fix that, I do have an option for the smart counter here. Just go to leading zeros, make sure you check that. And then it's going to be double digit all the way through. So that's good. So it basically does it on your keyframes here. So whichever keyframe is the highest, it's going to take that value and adjust all the zeros. So it's very handy like that, but it only works for keyframes. That's very important. So we have something like this. That's almost perfect, but we're not done yet. Then we're going to need to be animating this circle right here. So to do that, we're going to select this animated circle. We're going to navigate over to here and then add button, click on it. We're going to play with this trim path. So when you click on it, it's going to add it in here. And in here, we're going to be animating this start value. So as you can see, that's what we're going to be animating. And I do want the this right here to be at the top here. So we want to offset this like that. In fact, we're going to set it to negative 90 degrees. So now it's starting at the top. That's good. Now, I also noticed that these things are very flat. So to fix that, we're going to go to Smart Rect here. We're going to go to Stroke. And right here where it says the Align Cap, we're going to set it to Round. That's perfect. As you can see now, it's round. That's exactly what I need. So now we need to animate this. And to animate this, we're going to use a simple expression. Well, a few lines of expression, so it's not all that simple. So I'm going to alt click on the stopwatch for the start. And in here, we're going to create a variable called counter. Now, it can be anything, but I'm going to go with that because that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to basically use this. So I'm going to tell it to be. So this variable means nothing unless you assign something to it. We're saying counter, you are going to be, and we're going to pick whip to this counter animation. So basically this property is counter now. So at that point, we can just keep going down here. We're going to say another variable, let's do like key one. We're going to say, hey, counter this property. We want the value of the first key. And to do that, we're going to use a method called key. And inside here, we're going to define which key we want. We want the first one. So I'm going to say one. We're not done yet, but because key has other properties. And we want the value. So we're going to say period value. Okay. So we created the first one. Now I'm going to get the second key. So I don't want to retype all this. So if you press control D, it will duplicate it to the next line. So now we can just change this to key two and then here as well. Okay. So then we're going to use a simple linear method. And in here, we're going to say the following. We want the counter animation, the value. We want all those keys. And basically it goes right now from 60 to zero. We're basically saying key one value when it is uh, when it is 60. So between 60 and key two, which is zero, right? Key two. We we're kind of mapping things. We're saying key one, key two. So 60 and zero between those. When it is 60, I want for this value to be 100. So we're going to say 100. And when it is key two at the moment is zero, I want for this value to be zero. Okay, so now I want to click away. Watch this. So let's preview this. As you can see, it's working quite well. So you can really call it quits at this point and uh, you'd be pretty happy. Okay, but we're not done yet. So it's working, but here's what I want to do next. I want to do this because right now if I change this value to something big, I mean, it will count down to it. I mean, the lines are working, but the problem is it's not resizing to this value. So we need to adjust this. So in other words, we need to go over here to the size slider right here, and we need to create an expression here. But before we do that, we're going to use another tool that I created called Smart Size, and it's this one right here. So we're going to apply it to our text. And essentially what Smart Size does, it's, it's kind of like source rect at time, but it gives you... It gives you a value or the size of your selected layer. It's a it's a reference thing. It gives you the width and the height that you can quickly reference to. So for example, I'm going to select this. I'm going to say, hey, give me the width of this layer based on the ending point. So ending point, like whatever it is at the very end of this layer. Okay. And uh, if I run it, apply it to this, it creates this pseudo effect. It gives me reference width and height. I have offset. I have other things as well, but we're just going to stick to this. So now I can instantly say, all right, I'm going to select this, press E to reveal all of those. And we do have size. I'm going to select all of these actually, and then hit S twice to solo it. So we're going to be referencing this for right now. Well, now let, let me do this. I'm going to select 
all four of these for now. Okay, so now I'm going to say, hey, this slider, this size, let's parent you to the width. And uh, I mean, it's kind of working, right? I mean, it's maintaining the size of it, but we're not done yet because we do want to offset it. So smart size does have offset option for width. So in here, we can just push it. We can say 150. Make sure you type 150. All right, there you go. So now, as you can see, it's working quite well. So let me, I'm going to press U to see all of our keys. So it's working quite well. If I change this key to whatever value, maybe even bigger, smaller, let's go smaller, you can see it will grow pretty well. So no problems there. So it's very responsive. We can pull the keys closer together. And again, it's going to start at the key one and end there. So yeah, that's how easy it is to create a responsive circular timer using the smart tools. All right, well, that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching it. I hope you found it useful. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for buying all of our tools. We appreciate it. I always say that we wouldn't be where we are today if it wasn't for awesome people like you guys. We appreciate it. And uh, again, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And if you wanna be a part of our free mentoring group, you should definitely go to ukramia.com slash community. It's totally free. We enter people every Monday. So if you join today, you will not be in the group until Monday. It just makes it easier for us because we have a lot of people to enter and it's just easy to do it all one day. So join today. We'll let you in Monday and uh, you'll be a part of our family. But in the meantime, my name is Sergey Praknevsky and this is ukramedia.com.